So I wanted to take a brief moment to explain the one difference between this circuit and the contents of the dead bugs. Um, as anyone who's been following me for a while knows, I'm working on a <clears throat> on replacing the circuits for the optical sensors um, for the targets on ski ball games because <clears throat> we are retrofitting the new guts from Baytech into the old lanes from the now defunct Ski Ball Incorporated. Um, so my boss at the arcade has taken the, uh, th there's an optical sensor circuit, there's a, a photo transistor uh, pulled up with a resistor and the output of that goes to two transistors, one of which drives an LED and the other one uh, pulls down a logic signal that tells the game that a ball has gone through the target. Um, so those two transistors, the LED, all the resistors to drive it and whatever, um, my boss has been doing point-to-point -point wiring and then sealing the whole thing up in heat shrink tube, which is driving me nuts. Um, it's the most ugly, unprofessional looking thing I've seen in a while. Um, so I've, I've created, th there's seven targets per game, of course, um, for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 points and then two 100 point holes. So I've built all seven on one board here. Um, the other contents of the dead bug was a 1 watt, 180 ohm resistor that's used for driving the LED, or the infrared emitter, that goes with the phototransistor. And I don't like that solution. <clears throat> I thought about just putting seven 180 ohm resistors on this board, and... That's just actually more wire than we need, and it's it's more, I don't know, I don't like it. It's just not my preferred solution. So, while this board, the phototransistor side with the transistors and everything, and the LEDs to indicate it, that's exactly the same as the contents of my boss's point-to-point -point dead bug contraptions. Um, but, the part that drives the LEDs is a little bit different. So, what I'm going to do... What this board here is, well, this is a breadboard, but I've got five, uh, this is part of something else. I've got five blue LEDs here. They're wired up in series. <clears throat> the anode, that was in this yellow jumper wire, which is connected to the output of my multimeter over there, which is sitting there in current mode. And uh, it's probably ready to go to sleep, so I'm just going to wake it up, make sure it uh, doesn't time out. So for the negative side of these LEDs, notice I've, I've got, so I can demonstrate, I can uh, connect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 LEDs, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 LEDs in this series. Um, now the traditional way to drive an LED, as everybody knows, is through a resistor. I've got a 1K resistor tied to ground here. This is off 12 volts, and it's going to give us, you know, 10 milliamps or something for an LED. So the traditional way is we just take that negative, this white wire comes from that resistor, and we just hook that to the cathode of an LED. Sure enough, it blow, it uh, lights up. I hope it don't blow up. That would be bad. And we're pulling 11 milliamps, basically. And if we want to wire two LEDs in series, we can. Now we're pulling 8 milliamps because these are in series. Each one has a voltage drop across it. Um, so this is you got some of the voltage that would otherwise be across the resistor. Therefore, the amount of current through the resistor is lower. And we can go to 3 LEDs and they get a little bit dimmer. Now we're at 5 milliamps. 4 LEDs. Dimmer yet. 3 milliamps. 5 LEDs. I mean, those are barely lit up. We're at 0.7 milliamps, and so on and so forth. We can keep adding LEDs. Eventually, we'll uh, eventually the LED voltage will be more than the power supply voltage, and no current will flow, and they won't light up at all. Um, I don't know. Let's let's try that LED that I pulled out. Let's uh, let's add that in the chain. See if that's enough to. Yeah. See now, no currents flowing. Just, just to make sure I didn't get that in backwards. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but we're gonna... Yeah, no, it was in, it's in the right way. It's in the right way the first time. So, there's a... 
trick. Obviously, everyone knows the longer lead is positive. What if you've cut the leads off? Here's a trick. Works with all LEDs that I've encountered so far. The uh, transparent ones are the easiest. If you look inside there, you'll see that uh, one inside there, one of the uh, metal pieces is longer than the other. The long horizontal one that looks kind of like the minus symbol is negative. So the uh, shorter one is positive. I'm giving you all like whiplash here. The shorter one is positive, and we'll go ahead and show that in there. But make sure we got it right. Focus. Focus. Yep, we got it right. So yeah, now, needless to say, with 6 LEDs in series, no light at all, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you see they're getting sequentially brighter. If you wanted to run multiple LEDs at the same brightness, um, you would either pick a smaller resistor, or you use one resistor per LED, which actually wastes a lot of power. Um, let's say this is a 2-volt LED, and i got a 12-volt supply. And I'm pulling roughly 10 milliamps. Um, the LED is taking 2 volts, which leaves the resistor is eating the other 10 volts at the 10 milliamps, which is 100 milliwatts that the resistor is wasting as heat, um, versus you know the 2 volts, which is 20 milliwatts that's coming out of the LED. So that's that's a very 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 poor efficiency. So an individual resistor for each LED, as per the original design. Um, is is definitely uh, wasteful of energy at the very least. So, again, the, the thing I want to focus on the most, this is one LED, two LEDs, three LEDs, four LEDs, five LEDs, and six LEDs. Six, five, four, three, to uh, subtract one from all those numbers. <laughs> that's number of that's one LED. If I just dead short it, 14 milliamps through the 1K resistor. So the absolute amount of current is not the relevant part. The point is that as we add LEDs, the current goes down, which makes each LED dimmer. So that's using the resistor. That's the output from that 1K resistor right there. This black wire so if the collector of one of these transistors, and they're wired over to this 4-pin connector here. Those transistors, you know, this is not how the final output's done, but I found that clamping onto the heat sink of the, or the tab of the transistor was easier than trying to clip a gator clip onto one of those pins. So, so this, that, that black wire off that transistor comes over here and is this one. Now I can take this and drive an LED with it too. That transistor is part of an active circuit, and I can drive an LED with that. And they're set to the tw they're set to 20, 21 milliamps, but that's uh, the amount, again the exact amount is not important. But that's one LED. So now I'm going to move this probe, this pin over to two LEDs, three LEDs, four LEDs. And what I want to notice, this is four LEDs. Still at 20 milliamps. I'll drop that down to three LEDs. 20.8, two LEDs. Also 20.8, one LED, 20.8. I'm just going to dead short this. I'm going to attach the output of my circuit straight to the positive power supply, 20.8 milliamps. Um, and of course, it still, it still won't drive six LEDs because the uh, LED voltage is still higher than the power supply voltage. But... No matter what, no matter how many LEDs I wire up in series, you know, up to that magical point where it don't work at all, the total current through the string is 20 milliamps. So when I hook this up in the game, instead of having a separate resistor, a uh, separate high power resistor wasting energy for each infrared emitter diode, I'm going to wire all of them in, well, four of them in series, and that's going to come off one of these outputs. And then the remaining three arrow wire in series, and those will come off the other output. And they will both be pushing about 20, 21 milliamps through them. Um, the original circuit pushed 60 milliamps through each one of them. But uh, I've been testing the, uh, the ones that we have at 20 milliamps here, and, uh, and they work. They work just fine um, with uh, a fairly decent sensing distance between them. 
definitely more than needed for the circuit so, or for the application. So that is the change that I have made. That is the that is the only difference between this circuit and the contents of my boss's dead bugs. Um, with the exception of those, uh, these are called constant current sync circuits, and with the exception of those, the other part of the circuit is exactly the uh, exactly the same as the original sensor circuit. That's all.